Today, I want to introduce Kaido, an up and coming tool in the web application security testing space. It's fast, lightweight, and there are features being released every single month. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's see what it has in store for us. So getting set up is fairly straightforward. All you need to do is come to kaido.io, come to the login, obviously sign up an account if you haven't done already. And then eventually, once you're signed up, logged in, you'll arrive at the dashboard. And down here in the bottom right hand corner are the download links. And if you're running Kali like me, the easiest way to get started is just to download this Linux desktop app image, give it privileges to execute, so chmod plus x, and then run the application. And I've already done this, so I have this here ready to go. And all I'm going to do is open this up. And then we can see a local instance, 127.0.0.1.80.80, and I'm happy for it to run on 80.80. Click Start. And here, again, it might prompt you to log in. Once you're logged in, you should be good to go. There's one last thing that we need to set up before we can get started, and that is if you come up to here and you click on your accounts and you come to CA Certificate, just download this certificate, import it into Firefox or Chrome, and then you're good to go with intercepting traffic. And there are instructions to do this, which is quite nice as well. So you can just click CA certificate, choose your operating system, choose your browser, and download the certificate here and install it. So the first thing you might notice is that we can't actually click around or do anything until we create a project or select an existing project. And you can see I have one here already, which I was using to test earlier, but let's create a new one called Please like and subscribe and we'll create and then select this project. And now what we can do is we can browse through the different items or different functionality that's available to us. So before we go any further, we actually need a project to test something to generate some traffic and show the features of Kaido. So I'm just going to switch over to my development VM, quickly spin up a CTF that I've been working on. And here we are. So all we need to do is proxy our traffic through 8080. And then let's do something like join Cobra Kai. Ah, oh, username already exists. All right, registration successful. And then we come back to here and we can see that we already have some things in the sitemap. So we can see slash API slash register and we can see the requests that we've sent already. And if we come to HTTP history, we can see the requests that we've already generated as well. So pretty standard request, response, and we can see all of the traffic that we're creating. Now at this point, if we are getting lots and lots of requests and lots of noise in our HTTP history, we can think about setting up a scope. So we can create a new preset and then let's call it Cobra Kai. And then the host is this, and then we can just add this to in scope. And then we can also add items to out of scope as well. And then when we come back to HTTP history, we can choose to use this, although I forgot to hit save, which is behind the camera. So I hit save, come back, and you can see we have our Cobra Kai scope. Now, if I come back and I start to Google something, in the same browser, you'll notice that it doesn't come up in the HTTP history. So pretty handy for keeping your workflow nice and clean. And I do like the fact that we can preset lots of different scopes here and switch between them. And something that actually I've noticed having used this tool a couple of times now is that it helps you keep a really clean workflow and methodology. And you'll see that as we go through and as we take a look at things like the replay tool as well. So I'm going to take this request and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click send to replay, come down to replay. And you can see that we can send this request again, although it will come back and say username already exists. That's fine, but pretty standard functionality and easy to come back and forth between different variations in your payload. So for example, maybe I'm testing for mass assignment here and I change this from student to sensei and I change the name to Jeremy1, send this, and then I can continue 
testing the application. Now, something that's a little bit different about this that I really, really like, and we kind of see this on Postman, is the idea of collections. So here we have a default collection and a session. And what we can do is we can come in and create a new collection and we can rename this to Cobra Kai and then move this to Cobra Kai. Or if you want to be a little bit more specific, so let's say we have a new collection and we rename this to authentication, we can then move all of our attacks or payloads against authentication endpoints under this collection. So I'm a really, really big fan of this feature. I usually get bogged down with, you know, having 15, 20, 25, 30 repeater tabs open when I'm using Burp Suite. So this is a really nice way to stay organized and be able to come back to a large project and carry on working effectively. All right, so next up we have the automate. So from here, we can either go back to our HTTP history and find the request that we want, or we can just right click here and click send to automate. We can also add scope, take things out of scope and toggle different requests. I actually really like this format as JSON as well. So we can easily take like forms, switch them to JSON and send them on their way. So automate is now highlighted. We come down, click automate. And again, we have these sessions, which is really useful to stay organized and make sure that we're being thorough with our testing. But for now, what I'm gonna do is actually just select this account type, click mark so that we know what we're gonna be changing when we send our requests. Come over to the attack strategy. And I think we're just going to go sequential. One thing I did notice is the automate section of the docs isn't quite ready yet. So unfortunately we don't kind of have more detailed information against these different attack types, although we can kind of make logical guesses, but hopefully the documentation will be up to date soon. And then we'll just change the payload type to simple list, click load. So I'm just gonna come into other locations, computer, user, share, and then we'll come down into word lists. And I think we'll just pick a random word list. So let's just come into dev and click common. And then we can just click start. And it looks like we actually get a GraphQL error, unfortunately. So this could either be, maybe it's something that I've done wrong or something to do with my local install, or maybe it's a something to do with the application because we're currently on version like 0.7. So again, it's not like a, a final release. Let's try something else. Let's try null payload. Number of payloads to generate 1000, click start. And we can see lots and lots of payloads coming in. So a little bit of a hiccup there. And now we can easily click down and see all of the different requests and responses. If I just take myself out of the way, you can see here, yeah, request and response. All right, after a little bit of playing around, trying to get Automator working, I've actually found that if we come down to files and click browse and add a hosted file here, and I just selected the common.txt from user share word lists deb, you can see that it appears here. And then in Automate, instead of uploading the file, we can just once again, mark the error that we want. Go sequential, click hosted file, and then we can select common.txt. And when we click start, you can see that indeed this runs. So this is working. It's probably my mistake, not understanding how the tool works fully, but it is indeed working as expected. And this is really, really fast as well, which is kind of a nice bonus. So if you're throttled by Burp Suite, or if you have a tool that is a little bit slower than you'd like, then this runs pretty quickly, which is nice to see. Of course, we're just getting 400s back saying, hey, the username already exists, but it kind of demonstrates here that you can see every time we send a different payload, the account type is updated. So we're kind of fuzzing for this account type. So let's keep going and we'll move on to the convert section. So here we have a few options. We have base64, URL, HTML, and hex. And we have a decoded and encoded boxes as well. So in the decoded section, I wanna put something like, I don't know, hello there. And then we have the encoded. So what we can do is we can add something like base64. And of course it's gonna base64 encode this. One thing I did like is you can easily chain things. So if you're doing things like CTF or if you're 
URL encoding and then base64 encoding, you can add these as well. And you can see the chain develop as you add things or take them away. So next up, I want to just take a quick look at the roadmap. So if we come back to kaido.io, we can come to the roadmap. And here, what I want to do is I'm just going to filter by feature. And as you can see, with each version, we have some different features being released. So what's coming up? So we have Python plugins coming up, add a delete item next to a chain items in the converter page, add chat GPT integration. This is an interesting one. And one thing that I'd really like to see is the font size for me is actually a little bit too small. And I know I could just go in and change my resolution, but that's going to change the layout and display for all of my tools in my whole VM. It might already exist, but I had a look around. I couldn't find it. So I'd really like to see a slightly bigger font. So if you're interested in seeing what's happened or where the project is going, then this is a good resource to check out. And then let's also take a quick look at the pricing as well. So if I come over to here, you can see there's a couple of different options. So the monthly and the yearly, and it looks like about $100 per year or $10 per month, which I think for a tool that is currently usable, but still being developed, I think this is a fair price point. So that's it for this video. Now, once again, if you liked the project, you can check out the website at kaido.io. And of course, you can drop into their Discord server if you have any questions or want to support the community. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you do have other tools that you'd like me to take a look at, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time.